Today we're going to talk about section 3.4, parallel lines. On 3.4, sorry, parallel and perpendicular lines. On 3.4 we're just finding slope. With slope, you remember back to algebra that slope itself is the change of y over the change of x on a coordinate grid, which means that here, oops, sorry, let me do that. So here, if I have a coordinate grid and I have this line, the slope of the line here would be if I picked two points, the change of y, which is up and down, over my change of x, because I can count my slope. With that as well, mathematically, if you remember it had a formula, y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1 mathematically could find slope, which means that if I was given two ordered pairs, I could then say my slope was my change in my y, 4 minus 2, over my change in my x, 3 minus 1. Because again, he was x1, y1, he's x2, y2. Doesn't matter who you call the first or second point, what matters is that um, you're consistent on who you call the first and the second point. So then my slope becomes 2 over 2, which reduces to 1. And as I said, if I had a, a, a picture like I had here, say I had a coordinate grid like this, I have a, this line right here. I could say, what is the slope of this line by looking at the picture? So looking at the picture, I could just take two points, and I could say, all right, looking at this picture, my change in my x, or my y, excuse me, would mean I would go up 1, which is a positive direction 1, go right 2, which is a positive 2, so my slope would be 1 over 2, if you remember that back from algebra. So then what is the difference between a parallel or a perpendicular slope? Well, it's actually not so bad. A parallel slope is the same slope that you have. Why? Because when you have parallel lines, they're the exact same line. They're just equidistant from each other on the paper. So it's the same line. So my parallel slopes have to be the same as well because it's the same line. So if my slope was 2, my parallel slope is 2. If my slope was 1 half, my parallel slope is 1 half. If my slope equaled two -thir negative 2 thirds, my parallel slope would be negative 2 thirds. Now my perpendicular slope is a little bit different. If you recall, a perpendicular line is one that crosses at a 90 degree angle. So if I have a line here, it's got to cross the perpendicular line. It's going to cross like this to be perpendicular. It means it crosses at a 90 degree angle. So with that as well, the slope is a little bit different. It's what we call a negative reciprocal, which in basic terms means negative just means it's the opposite of what I have. So if he's positive, he's negative. Reciprocal means flip it. Numerator to denominator becomes now denominator over numerator. So that's basically what it means. So if my regular slope was 2 thirds, my perpendicular slope then would take its negative, because it was positive, makes it negative, then flips it to 3 over 2. If my slope was 4, my perpendicular slope then makes it negative, and flips it to 1 fourth, because remember he's out of 1 hiding underneath him. If my slope was negative 5 thirds, my perpendicular slope takes its opposite, so now it's positive, and flips it to make it there. So that's all the perpendicular and the um, parallel slope do when you're talking about slope of a line. So if I gave you two points, I might say calculate my slope, which then uses my formula. So my slope equals negative 2 minus 3, because he's y1, y2. And then 
x2 minus x1. He's x2, he's x1. So if I calculate the slope, I have negative 5 over 2, which then is, sorry, just stays negative 5 over 2 because he's always a fraction. Sorry, didn't need to do that. So now it says give me his parallel slope. Well, if he's negative 5 over 2, the parallel slope is the same, so he's negative 5 over 2. The perpendicular slope takes it and says, okay, I need to take it. If, if he's negative, he needs to become positive, and then I need to flip the second priest so it becomes 2 fifths. If you have any questions, let me know.